but I've never been satisfied with where it got me. I've thought of God as an old man, a nice grandfather for you, but one who's a tad fragile, not someone who can defend me when I'm threatened. I feared him with a strict principle, an ever-present policeman who was always nagging on me and just waiting to thumb me as the guy who did it. I once considered him to be my good luck charm. All I had to do was call on him, and hopefully he would come serve me and give me what I wanted, my own personal genie in the bottle. I even pictured him as an absent landlord, someone I have to pay rent to, and frankly, probably someone with a lot better things to do than bother with me. And I'd imagine him other ways, but all my images of God are just too small. All of them, that is, except one. God has told us in the Bible that he is spirit, does not detail his physical appearance, and in fact it reminds us that no man has seen God at any time. But the Bible also tells us something else. It tells us that God became flesh. It tells us that Jesus makes it known what God is like, that he is the visible image of the invisible God, that in Jesus all the fullness of deity dwells in bodily form. It tells us that Jesus himself said, He who has seen me has seen the Father. If you know me, you know my Father. The Bible also says that Jesus' body was not stately in form or appearance that we should be attracted to him. But his person, wow, talk about attractive. When you talk about the person of Jesus, you don't find yourself talking about his strong points. You marvel that he is the exact representation of the nature of God. Every good attribute and characteristic of perfection is seen in Jesus. Want to know what God looks like? Then take a look at Jesus. See how he handles the oppressed. Watch how Jesus pursues those that are lost. Notice how he feels tenderly with friends. Be amazed at how he loves and how much forgiveness for his enemies. Look at how he stands strong in the face of death. Notice how he sacrifices himself for the good of others. Watch how he respects those in authority and yet how he bows to know them. Observe how he handles hypocrites, betrayal, and deceit. Look at his response to dead religion, burdensome tradition, and the arrogance of men. Amen. Notice how children run in. Watch the service world and believe as a man. Always loving, never failing, continually forgiving. Want to know what God looks like? Look at Jesus. Jesus today. Uh, we started last week, we talked about God, and we kind of got on the foundation that we believe in one true God, um, and, and it's real similar, a lot of other religions actually believe in one true God. But this is the part, and this is the man that changed Christianity from being Jewish. This is what changed uh, the entire world. This is probably might be one of the hardest things you can wrap your mind around because we're going to talk about how Jesus and God are the same person. Do any of you guys struggle with that? Anybody else struggle with that sometimes? I mean, because it's kind of hard to wrap your head around how can this all be the same and how, how can Jesus and, and God and the Holy Spirit all work together? So today we're going to lay some of that foundational work because next week we're talking about the Holy Spirit. Wow, I'm really excited about that one. But I wanted to start off and tell you guys a story. Uh, the story I want to share with you is one that my dad shared with me many times. Uh, many of you guys know my father was in the military. Um, and he was, uh, what I don't know, some kind of big uh, master sergeant or something. I, I was a kid, I don't know. But I know he just had a bunch of stuff. And I can remember as a small child that everybody respected my father. My dad's five foot nine. He's about that big around, but I'm telling you, when that man walked into a room, I don't care who it was or how many people were standing there, most people would stand up and say, or just stand up, I didn't understand it as a child. But my dad started to teach me things as a kid. Like, I, I would always ask him questions like, how do you do what you do? How do you get these people to stand up? I remember one story, and I was sitting here, my dad's going to go to the field, and there's all these buses lined up. And these 
two young men forgot to fill their canteens with water. Military guys, is that a bad thing? Yes. And if you're a sergeant, would find out what would happen. Does anybody, what would you guys, what are some of you military guys, what would you guys do? I know I got some sergeants in here. Elder, what would you do? Let him go first. Let him go first. Okay, well, my dad wouldn't do that. Um, he, he thought it was a lot more punishment than that, so he would actually make people get thirsty. Um, so he made these two gentlemen run to the far end of uh, Fort Carson, Colorado military base to some, I don't know, I don't think it was a pump one, but just one of the old fashioned pillar ups, make him run back and they couldn't drink. And I remember one of them getting back, he was a young guy, he was probably, he was probably younger than I was, well, I am now. And he looked at my dad, he comes back, he's in formation. My father would ask a simple question. Did you enjoy yourself? I hate that question. My dad asked me that all the time when I was in trouble. And that's basically what he was doing. And this young man goes, sir, I can do that all day long. <laughs> See, uh, let me tell you something about my dad. He has, I think he has a short man's complex. And so uh, anybody that's taller him, he loves to make do stuff. So he said, okay, well, if you can run all day, I bet you can do push-ups all day too, can't you, young man? And he goes, the man, young man steps down and starts counting them out. I mean, he's pumping them. I remember them. I was like, man, I want to do that someday. And my dad goes, well, it looks like you're doing easy. And I guess you can do that all day. So stand back up. Put your pack on. And this is a full pack. And I mean, I don't know what was all in it, but it was. He gets down. He's pumping them out. I mean, this young man was strong. He just kept pushing. So my dad goes, oh, I guess you can do those all day. He goes, let me add 185 on top of it. And sat down on the pack. Young man started to struggle. <laughs> but, but through those stories, I'd ask my dad later in life when I started to become like a boss and work in companies and stuff, I'd say, Dad, what's the best way to lead somebody? What's the best way to show somebody uh, to earn that respect that you earn when you walk in a room? He goes, Son, I want to share something with you. He goes, Never, ever let your boss outwork you. That was the first thing he taught me. My question to him was, Dad, I am the boss, so how do I do this? And he goes, son, never let your employees outwork you. He says, never ask anybody to do something that you're not willing to do yourself. Good message, right? I'm just starting to learn it. So, you know, he taught me that many years ago. I'm just kind of figuring that stuff out. So now it's going to be on YouTube, and I'm pretty sure he's going to find it and going to hear that I actually listen to him at some point in time. <laughs> But kind of going through this whole understanding of, of Christianity and building this basis, um, like the video was sharing, is that we need to look at Jesus. We need to really look at how he encountered all these different um, situations. But before we can do that, before I can even go any further on the idea of what did Jesus do, I think we need to start with who is, who is Jesus. Because that is one of the foundations of our faith. This is what separates us from everybody else. See, I did a study on all different religions in the world, and they basically all teach the same thing. Do you guys know that? The golden rule. The Bible teaches it. Uh, Islam kind of teaches it. Judaism teaches it. Uh, some of your Eastern uh, religions do. Very few religions in the world do not teach do unto others as you want done to yourself. Right? Bible scholar, he said yes. But what I want to share with you is what separates Christianity is Jesus. I mean, even in Islam, Islam even makes a statement that says that they believe that Jesus was a prophet. That he even was born a virgin. That he lived a sin-free life. And that, that sounds more close to what we believe, right? I mean, seriously, that's a foundational. But there's one piece that they don't believe in. That he is God himself. And this is where we have to build this foundation. We have to understand this, this concept. Because if, if we struggle with it sometimes, and, and, and you don't fully understand how we believe that Jesus is God, and the Holy Spirit is God, then we need to slow down. We need to stop for a second. This is why I want to get back to the basics of it. Back to the basics is going to the foundational beliefs of the Christian faith. So if you, would you please turn with me to the book of John, chapter 1. We're going to cover five verses today. Just five. And 28 supplementary verses. 
And I see, I think that honestly, because it's really part is that everybody's always struggling with the fact that Jesus is God himself. 